Welcome to a brief overview of transfer functions. The Laplace transform leads to the following useful concept for studying the steady state behavior of a linear system. Consider an equation of the form Lx equals f of t, where L is a linear constant coefficient differential operator. Then f of t is usually thought of as the input of the system, and x of t is thought of as the output of the system. For example, for a mass spring system, the input is the forcing function f of t, and the output is the behavior of the mass, x of t. We would like to have a convenient way to study the behavior of the system for different inputs. Let us suppose that all initial conditions are zero, and we take the Laplace transform of both sides of the equation. The result is an equation in the form of big A of s times big X of s equals big F of s. If we solve for the ratio of big X of s divided by big F of s, we obtain what's called the transfer function big H of s, which is equal to one divided by big A of s. That is, big H of s equals big X of s divided by big F of s, which also implies big X of s equals big H of s times big F of s. We obtain an algebraic dependence of the output of the system based on the input. We can now easily study the steady state behavior of the system given different inputs by simply multiplying by the transfer function H of s. Let's take a look at an example. We are given x double prime plus omega sub zero squared x equals f of t, where has to find the transfer function assuming all initial conditions are zero. For the first step, we take the Laplace transform of both sides of the equation. The Laplace transform of x double prime, looking at our notes, is equal to s squared times big X of s minus s times x of zero minus x prime of zero. But because all initial conditions are zero, we know x of zero is zero, and so is x prime of zero, leaving us with just s squared times big X of s, plus the Laplace transform of omega sub zero squared x, which is equal to omega sub zero squared times big X of s. Equals on the right, the Laplace transform of f of t is big F of s. And now to find the transfer function big H of s, we need to determine big X of s divided by big F of s, which means for the next step we need to solve the equation for big X of s which I've shown here on the left in blue. For the next step, we factor out big X of s and then divide by the quantity s squared plus omega sub zero squared, giving us big X of s equals big F of s divided by the quantity s squared plus omega sub zero squared. And now to find big H of s, the transfer function, we divide big X of s by big F of s, which I've shown here on the far right. Notice the big F of s's simplify out, leaving us with big H of s, the transfer function equals one divided by the quantity s squared plus omega sub zero squared. And now let's see how we use the transfer function. Suppose that we have a constant input f of t equals one. If we take the Laplace transform on both sides of the equation, we have big F of s equals one divided by s, and since big X of s equals big H of s times big F of s, we have big X of s equals one divided by the sum of s squared and omega sub zero squared times one over s. From here, we take the inverse Laplace transform of both sides of the equation, which I've shown here below. On the left, the inverse Laplace transform of big X of s is equal to x of t. On the right, to find the inverse Laplace transform of this product, we do have to perform partial fraction decomposition, not shown here. The result is, the inverse Laplace transform of the constant one over omega sub zero squared times one over s minus the constant one over omega sub zero squared times s divided by the sum of s squared and omega sub zero squared. The inverse Laplace transform is equal to one over omega sub zero squared minus cosine omega sub zero t divided by omega sub zero squared, which we can write in the form shown here on the far right. We have x of t equals the difference of one and cosine omega sub zero t divided by omega sub zero squared. This indicates if the input is f of t equals one, the output is given by x of t. I hope you found this helpful.